Hi, I'm Kyle with the Animal Hospital of Statesville, and I am here with Aubrey, who is a student at UGA, <laughs> University of Georgia, and she is here as an intern, um, a volunteer intern, pretty much, but I'm going to let her introduce herself and uh, tell you a little bit about what she's doing. Hi, I'm Aubrey, and like, like she said, I go to University of Georgia. I just finished my second year, which is halfway done with vet school. I went to Clemson University for an undergraduate degree for a pre-vet, and now I'm at University of Georgia since South Carolina doesn't have a veterinarian school yet. yet. Hopefully they will have one soon. Clemson is thinking about building one. And at University of Georgia, I am mixed focus, which means I am doing small animal and large animal. Hopefully when I graduate, I will be working with small animal general practice like here at Statesville Animal Hospital. And then I will also be going to do some equine emergency work on the side. <laughs> well, and one reason she has chosen to focus mainly on small animal is that she's rather small herself. Think Dr. Zerker. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's only some, like she said, what would you say, when you pull a calf, some of yeah. the bull calves are bigger than you are? They're about the same size as oh. me, so. Yeah, so that's a, that's a big job for a big person, let alone a, a smaller person. So, anyway, we have her here for internship, and how did you choose Animal Hospital of Statesville? <laughs> So actually, my boyfriend lives up here in Statesville. He works at a plan up here, and I wanted to go around where he would be, where he will be living in the future, because I will probably move to his area. So I went on Google and started looking at different <laughs> um, hospitals around here, and I really liked the website. It was had a lot of different options and multiple doctors to learn from. And then I just called up here and asked if they would do it, if they did internships for veterinarian students, and they do. <laughs> And hence, we have her. And that's actually, we had Dr. Zerker kind of as an intern, but she's been here for uh, two weeks already, and she has two weeks more to go. Um, and you start school again when? I will start back August 10th. August 10th. So you don't have a whole lot of summer, do you? <laughs> no. Oh, well. So what made you decide to go into veterinary medicine? So growing up, we've always had pets. We've had bunnies, cats, dogs, horses, the occasional beta fish, just bring them things. And I've always, with, with my dogs and my horses, I had, as I got older, had a lot of relationship with my personal vets mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. and love learning about all their different chronic diseases and like the pathway of them with the vet and their, just how their relationship goes from beginning to end with their, with the person and with the animal. So you realize that when you work as a veterinarian, mm -hmm. that it's not just all about the animals, you have to deal with the people too, <laughs> mm -hmm. because the people love their animals and if they don't like you, They'll just go somewhere else. <laughs> yep, they'll find somewhere else to go and find somewhere else to treat their animals. So um, why uh, University of Georgia? You said because South Carolina does not have a vet school yet. Yes. Um, There's only 30, I think 32 now in the United States. Mm -hmm. So it's very limited. And so South Carolina actually pays for in-state tuition at three schools, the difference for their residents at Mississippi State, Georgia, and Tuskegee University. Oh, wow. That's so, a plus. So, yes, I get in-state tuition there. But they were also my top choice. They just built a brand new anatomy lab for us my first year. We have a brand new, I think it was $2 million hospital. Oh, with, wow. With some equipment that even John Hopkins University doesn't even have, like treatment areas. So we get to do, we have a lot of equipment that most people will never be able to see, like even the medical field. So it's one of the, I think we, this year we were number seven in the country That's for fantastic. veterinary schools. So yes, it, it was a top one and it's closer to home than some of the other ones. And you're originally from South Carolina. Yes, I'm um, from Columbia, South Carolina. Okay, so she's not that far away from home anyway. Um, what do you like about vet school and what do you not like? So what I love about vet school is, especially at Georgia, we say we party, we play hard and party hard. Like we have, we do different social outings together. We get, um, we have, we actually have two fraternities with the vet school. They're graduate students only, and we do tailgates for them. I'm a part of one of them, and we have different social gatherings. And our professors come to them, and we have like proms and stuff. So just it's kind of like a big family. Yeah, it's a big atmosphere family type. atmosphere there. 
and all these um, friendships I'm making now will be like lifelong. They will be my colleagues one day that I know that I, let's say, don't like radiology, but my friend really loved it and went on to do a residency that I can just call her up because I have her number and ask about a case. Mm -hmm. So it's not even just friends that have different interests. Everyone has the same interest now. And what I felt like in pre-vet was you were in competition quote unquote with your fellow classmates because everyone's trying to get in. I think when I applied for vet school, there was over, I think 2,000 applicant, no, 10,000 applicants for about 100, 150 seats. It's extremely so, competitive to get into vet school these days. I'll say and, more than medical school actually now. And, and do you think, I mean, there used to be a lot more men in veterinary medicine and now it's kind of changed over to we more women. We have only so. 15 men in our class, which is 10% of our class. Really? Yes. Really? <laughs> what What do you think helped push you over the... I had a lot of good experience in pre-vet with veterinarians, so I did the same kind of work. One of them was my personal equine vet, and she wrote a glowing recommendation for me. I was really confident with horses, been around them. I've been riding since I was four years old. And then just um, other ones. And then I had a 3.85 GPA at Clemson. Okay, that, <laughs> so, that helps too. And, now, now, what about high school? Were you up in there in high school too? Mm -hmm, so yes. you have to have pretty good grades to yes. get and through these. Clemson things. has a pre-vet program, which not every university has. Mm -hmm. They're the only one in South Carolina to have one. So I also took that track. So I got to do courses with re semi-retired vet professors who mm -hmm. wanted to get out of doing clinics all all the time so now they're just doing research and teaching students so I have to have I have had experience before getting into vet school with those kind of professors and those type of tests so if you're <laughs> planning to go to vet school that's something that you really want to consider to get some experience ahead of time um, yes either you have as to a vet assistant a vet tech yeah anything like that I was a vet assistant that basically worked out to be a tech without like going to tech school because I was going to veterinarian school but I have uh, Georgia, we have about a thousand hours working underneath the veneer and in some shape or form before applying to get in. That's our average now. So that's about average between all um, schools now. So the internship that she's doing now is totally voluntary. She doesn't get any school credit for it. Mm -hmm. um, so she's doing this to better herself. So it's a big sacrifice to be able to do that. Um, uh, the one thing you didn't answer is what do you not like about <laughs> I was saying, but I, it's, We won't show this to her professors or anything. Well, yet. they know. They, they tell <laughs> us this. It's like drinking out of a fire hose. Last semester, I had two exams a week. The entire semester. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and we had surgeries, and surgeries you're standing there for five, six hours a day, plus having to study for you two tests a week. So, you never really get downtime. But usually, my friends and I, like after some big tests, we go out and get Mexican or go get pizza together on Friday night, and then all day Saturday, <laughs> you're studying, watching football or whatever on the yeah. TV. But yeah, most of the time, it's you don't get a lot of downtime. It's a lot of time studying. Well, I guess you just have to think of it this way is it's four years out of your life to prepare for the rest of your life mm -hmm. and it, it looking back on it it's going to go fast but yes in the midst of it and it's like any school it just seems like it takes and forever. there's 150 of us and we're all going through the so we sit in the same classroom all day and the professors ro rotate between us because we all oh, take wow. the same classes at the same time do you get up mm, yeah we have a 10 minute yeah we have, we have a 10 minute break between each class <laughs> but most of the days we're going to class from eight to three with a one hour lunch break and 10 minutes between each course. But you know that every person is struggling with the same stuff as you and our class is really good about, we make study guides together, we make quizlets like flashcards and we'll put and we'll post them in a group chat we have just to help each other study. And so there's a lot of camaraderie, colleague support yeah. and, and camaraderie like about it. And like we all, like if everyone feels bad about an exam, you feel better about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just like everyone's going through the same thing now and now we're just trying to support each other and build each other up with it. Uh, do they give you um, business education when you're we in do, vet school? No, we have a little bit but we have a club called um, VBMA which is Veterinary Business Management Association. I'm a part of that and they have different people come in from all parts of the industry from veterinarians to technicians mm -hmm. to corporates and um, other practices come in and the Georgia Veterinary Medical Panel comes in and talks to us about okay. different topics. So I, 
if you want to, you can get medical practice, I mean, business practice, but it's not required with school. Well, veterinarians are, have one of the highest suicide rates. Um, the whole profession or the profession as a whole, including technicians and everything, are very much under stress these days. Are they addressing that in vet school? We now? have, um, we personally have two psychiatrists on on our staff for the students to use free of charge the school pays for them we have so university of georgia has two campuses mm -hmm. we have our brand new venue not brand new it was about five years old venue and teaching hospital then we That's have pretty new yeah <laughs> but not brand new well. but and then the others and then we have classic cambridge which is on site like on University Camp, University of Georgia campus, and that's Classic Campus. That's where their old hospital was, and that's where I've been at school for two years. And next year, I'll be moving over to the hospital. So they have a perf they have one at each school that we can go see. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot of. <laughs> like you said, the camaraderie that you have with the, your with your yeah. other students. So if somebody's going through something, you mm -hmm. can and we you have. Can kind of help uh, them bulldog program because we are the dogs we have a bulldog support well, network <laughs> we have a bulldog support network too of okay. students that help each other if you don't want to go see the psychiatrist about it that's good that's really good um so you have two more years of vet school mm -hmm. what does your internship look like from there she doesn't just do this one which is volunteer she has some that are required correct yes so Starting in February 2024, I'll be in clinics through May 2025. So that's at the hospital doing large and small animal. I'll be doing anesthesia, radiology, surgery, et cetera, et cetera. And then I do between three and five outside externships. And these will be, and it depends on, they just approved it for us to have five because we have a bigger class size now. We're 150. It was 120. So, oh. so yeah, they've approved us to do more, but one of them will be at um, Charleston's Humane Society doing spay neuters. Um, so you, you'll get a lot of practice doing that. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten some practice here. I've been able to help with neuters and some spays here too. Well, you've been, uh, have you been working with all the doctors yes. on that? I, I'm here on Tuesday, so I see you're working with Dr. Gaither. So And Dr. Pendergrass, I mean, we've been in a lot of surgeries because he's been in surgery two days a week while I've been here so far. Okay, so. that works out well. Well, she's getting a taste of what it's really like, and she's still willing to go back, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, do you have any idea where you're going to want to practice? One day, my boyfriend and I, we do want to move to Texas. We want to move to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I grew up doing rodeo and riding horses, and he's a big hunter. So for both of our lifestyles, it would be we want to go somewhere out west, and mm -hmm. I feel like the Dallas area would be somewhere. And with his current company, they have a lot of plants near Dallas area. So, yeah, one day we'll end up out there. Well, as a native Texan, <laughs> I can't deny that, although I love North Carolina. I was you know, once a Texan, always a Texan. They kind of embed that in your brain when you're little. Um, is there anything that you want somebody that wants to go to vet school or thinks they want to go to vet school? Uh, we, we, we were laughing before we started this because when people want to come to work here, the first thing they say, I want to work there because I love animals. Uh, besides loving animals, why do you want to work at a vet clinic? And it's just like crickets. <laughs> um, I'll say mine was to understand was to figure out what's wrong with an animal who can't tell you, oh, my knee hurts, oh, this is wrong with me. I like the mystery of it and also helping humans in a different avenue than actually working on them. And, and that's really <laughs> important because you do work th with the humans that own these pets who's, who are part of their families. And if you can't get along with humans, you, you really, I don't think you could do a good job here. No, probably not. You probably had to go and research or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sit in your little microscope. Oh, I don't want to put anybody into a little <laughs> bubble there, but yeah, I don't think I could do that. Yeah, but um, what I would recommend is to get into a local clinic, whether it's starting out as a kennel tech or a vet assistant, where you're not doing much other than watching and cleaning up, but then talking to your techs, talking to the doctors about what's going on and the thought process behind what they're doing and just work your way up to see if this is actually something you would want to spend the rest of your life doing. Yeah, don't don't all of a sudden go into vet school and then decide, oh, yeah, you put, this isn't anything like what I thought have, it would be. You have be. to do four years of undergrad plus your four years of vet school. You don't want to spend eight years worth of college tuition 
just you realize two years out, you don't want to do it. <laughs> no, it, it's not an inexpensive, even with out of state or in state mm-hmm. tuition. Um, and not everybody's been that lucky to get the in state tuition. Mm-hmm. I think most of our doctors actually have. NC, um, NC State gives it after the first year, no matter what your resident status is. Well, uh, <laughs> Dr. Christie, I think, was from here. Mm-hmm. Dr. Gaither was from here. Dr. Pendergrass <laughs> was from here. Dr. Cooney went to Auburn. He was from Alabama. And let's see, Dr. Zerker went to Virginia. So, mm-hmm. And that's where they live. So we, they were lucky to get in, but they they also had exceptional grades and exceptional experience so we've been very lucky and we're very lucky to have Aubrey here and uh, learning from us and we are happy to help interns um, and happy to teach the the generations coming up um, to do what we love doing and what some of us have done for a quarter of a century (laughs) so um, Good wishes to Audrey Aubrey, and um, we hope you'll come back and visit us once in a while before you go back to Texas. It's a long drive. I've done it a million I've times. Done, I've done it, too. Yeah, it's fun. It's like, oh, we just went through Mississippi. I totally forget that state. <laughs> oh, well. Well, thank you very much for watching. Just thought this might be of interest to you all. Um, so wish Aubrey good luck, and um, she'll be a great vet. Thanks. Thank Bye. You.